I'm not super concerned, though, because the North American League, from a competition standpoint, is definitely weaker than not only the rest of other regional leagues in Tier 1, but also in international competition, you're not going to get an X set or a Beast Coast yeah, or NA a Disrupt game. <laughs> All right, let's discuss that one, shall we? If you ask me to rank Siege's biggest regional leagues by how close I think their competition is, I know you didn't ask, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'd put BR6 at the top and EUL in second place. Brazil's won the last couple of big Premier Siege tournaments, and the winners have had to defeat some Latin American teams along the way to doing that. And Europe has also produced some really strong international contenders that have made some pretty deep runs at those events as well. In third place... I would put the NAL. I know I'm betraying my employer, my brand, and my countrymen by saying it, but I must put my bias aside and get real for a second. We're behind right now. We are the epitome of that podium guy meme who celebrates and pops champagne even though he's only in third place. APAC, one day you will get out of fourth place. You're getting better and better every stage, but... That's not the reason we're here right now. It's a gut ranking, but when we said North America sucks, that's by comparison to the regions that we find ourselves competing against most often, Brazil and Europe. Both of them got two teams into the semifinals for the Mexico Major, whereas NA had... NA. Dark Zero obviously got handicapped by having to play from their hotel rooms, but there's really no excuse for how a team like Space Station performed against Empire. They slammed everybody in Stage 2 of the North American League. Six regulation wins, one forfeit win, only one overtime loss, a 55-18 to 18 round differential, players in the top five of four major statistical categories. I, most of that last one was hot and cold, but still. This team slaughtered North American competition then went to a major and floundered. Their group stage was fine, but given how their stage two went, I did expect more from them, not just from their playoff result. So I got to thinking, how does the NAL as a league, not necessarily North America as a region, stack up against other leagues from around the world? We're almost at the end of the 2021 season, so there's enough relevant data to pull from here. I think to some extent, every league has a top half and a bottom half. And if we had to figure out what the North American League's top half is, it's the Sonics, Space Station, Oxygen, and you can also probably make a pretty strong case for TSM. So that's our top four. The four teams that have topped the scoreboards most often over the course of the past year. Sometimes a team will dip out of the top four and then bounce back after a stage or so. And honestly, this should also be the top four that qualifies for the Sweden major if all goes according to plan. The other five NAL teams just in my head don't crack into that category. Whether it's them being inconsistent, they're rebuilding, or sometimes they're just floundering, there's a pretty clear divide between the top half and the bottom half of teams in North America. I think this concept exists in every league, but let me show you how it's different. Top half in Europe, I'd say, is BDS, Empire, G2, Navi, and Kavana. G2 and Navi are obviously going through some really weird struggles in Stage 3, but they've been very strong for the majority of this year. This top half has one more team than NAL's top half, you'll note, but it's also interesting because EU's middle ground of teams like Vitality, Virtus Pro, and Rogue they blur the line between those two halves in Europe and keep the scores so close that sometimes it's almost like anyone's game in terms of who can get into the top four to qualify for a major spot some stages. In Europe, the divide between good and subpar teams becomes a lot harder to determine. In Brazil, it's the same thing. Obviously a different scoring system, but you still put Liquid, Phase 1, Furia, NIP into a bracket above everybody else. And MIBR and Black Dragon seem like they're destined to fight for that last Copa Elite spot until the Void comes to swallow us whole, but still, it blurs the line. In North America, it's much more black and white. These four teams have either done really good so far through this year, or we've always expected them to do well, and these five teams either fluctuate or really don't do anything in terms of competing for a top four spot. Against other North American teams, the NAL has a strong top four and a bottom five that's somewhere between almost contending or never enough. Competition between both halves isn't as tight as it is in other leagues, so with that in mind, this is why I think the NAL is behind. More teams in EUL or BR6 are capable of having close games with one another than the NAL is. Like, for example, a Vitality can defeat either a Heroic or an Empire. A Black Dragons can beat an INTZ or a Team Liquid. Exec can beat a Dark Zero, but do you ever expect them to beat Space Station? Spoiler alert, they haven't yet. Yeah, I didn't think so either. And the biggest reason why I think this divide is an issue 
international competition. Lots of teams in each region play a very similar style of siege to one another, which makes it really fun when we get to LAN and we get to see those styles clash. But the regional leagues that these teams come from are the best, most meaningful practice that these guys have to prepare for something like a major. So if most of the teams in the highest level of North America aren't able to compete with the top chosen few, then I think the region as a whole suffers. The top half teams don't get to play against high quality opponents, and the bottom half teams just lose and take the hit because what else are they gonna do? In the NAL, there really has seemed to be this kind of imbalance. You don't really expect teams at the bottom of the league to do anything substantial against top teams, and when it happens, it's a massive surprise, and we hope that means there's improvement, but it's not something that's been able to showcase itself consistently over time. And there are some teams who, for all of the 2021 season, have historically struggled. But here's the cool part. We're already getting better. I concocted the idea for this video right after the Mexico major was done because that was after North American teams didn't really make a big run or got eliminated quickly. And it seemed like the NAL in stage two wasn't a really good primer for our squads to go to Mexico and get slapped. But it looks like competition's already gotten a little bit closer in stage three. If teams that are in the bottom half of a league start to pick up steam and give top half teams more of a run for their money, not only is that good for them because it's showing self-improvement, but it also gives top teams a reason to stay on their toes and play smarter. Like, it's a symbiotic relationship that just happens naturally, and I think it's something that Brazil and Europe take much better advantage of than we do. It's not like every team in a league is capable of being good all at the same time, just like there's no way every team in like an NFL conference can all be good simultaneously, but it does mean that any improvement in a league like this is good for the entire ecosystem. Teams like Dark Zero and Astralis are having some identity crisis issues right now, but Beast Coast and Xset look like they're beginning to shake off the stereotype of just being new Challenger League promotions that were always stuck at the bottom. They've got new players, it's obvious they've got new plans, and as a result, they've got a new lease on life. They're still far from top contenders, but still, this is what we need more of. This isn't a problem with no solution. North America as a region isn't destined to remain behind the rest of the world forever. It's not even to say that the North American League getting some improvements is going to be the win condition for NA to suddenly win an Invitational or something. That's not it at all. I just feel as though we're slightly lopsided as to who's good and who's still struggling by comparison to leagues like Brazil and Europe where things seem to be a little bit more in balance. We've already got a pretty solid top four that hell could go off and win a major right now and prove my entire point completely worthless. But if our bottom five shore up their issues and their inconsistencies, then not only can they start eventually contending for major spots themselves, but the teams that end up going to LAN will be much better prepared, much stronger for the experience of facing these opponents, and may even be able to bring championships home again. The alternative title for this video could be North American League Analyst Drinks Two Liters of Copium, but I'm just looking for a reason to be positive about Sweden, dude. <laughs> just, just get better. And a lot of this sentiment does come from somebody who roots for the underdogs. Like, I've been critical of Xset for a long time. I remembered casting an Xset game back in the day and thinking, I don't know how this team won. But these days, they look a lot better. When I say that on the North American League desk, I 100% mean it. And once we start seeing a lot more teams in the NAL get better, I genuinely think that the entire region is strengthened. So Dark Zero, Mirage, Astralis, Beast Coast, Xset, pressure's on you. Once you guys get better, all of NA gets better. And that is all for me. What's your ranking look like for all the different regional leagues in Siege? Would you put the NAO in third? Would you put them higher or lower someplace? And do you think that having a really good regional league program means additional success when we go to major events? Let me know in the comments and be sure to come back in for those last two days of the NAL this week and next week because uh, we got three more major spots to lock in and some relegations. So things are getting spicy. Hit up my Twitter, my Twitch, my YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Thanks. Bay.